Hi, YouTubers. Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to the Hot Lead Zone. And let me give you my own personal history with shotgun slug reloads over the last 35 years. The two slugs on the left are the Lee 7 8 and Lee 1 ounce slug. And the round ball is the Lee 690 round ball. Now I've tried using all kinds of combinations of wads and powder and hulls over the last 35 years searching for accuracy and performance and accuracy has been elusive. Now you'll hear some claims that people are getting two inch groups at 50 yards with their reload rifled slugs but I haven't been able to reproduce that. Accuracy has been elusive. But because of the economy and the fun of shooting my own slugs I keep on doing them. Now recently having posted on YouTube, John with no H encouraged me to go ahead and get a Mossberg rifled barrel for my 500 shotgun. And I went ahead and did that and that led me to the Lyman 525 pellet slug which I've always been interested in all these years but didn't want to invest in it because of the cost of the mold and the cost of the rifle barrel, but it finally broke down and did that. So thank uh, John with no H for that. But that caused all kinds of new load development, which you've seen on YouTube videos currently. Now it looks like I've got some consistent three and a half to four inch groups at 50 yards with this slug, and either the Winchester AA12 wad or the DRA12 downrange yellow wad and you've seen some videos on that. But we're not getting two inch groups from a rest at 50 yards. Best is about three and a half to four inch groups. And searching for more accuracy than that may not be possible, but I know we keep looking. But why are we having problems? So first of all, the slugs were designed to be used in shot cup wads that were never designed to be used for slugs in the first place. The wads are designed for target shooting shot charges, not for slugs. The average shotgun barrel that's either improved cylinder or cylinder bore is .700 inches. So all those slugs are in the 6.8 range. With the exception of the round ball, which is .690. And when they're placed in those wads, then they have room for the wad to slide through the barrel as the slug goes through. But, if you notice when you pick up some of your fired wads at the range, you'll see that, as often as not, some of the pedals are stripped off. Well, every time a pedal strips off, you're losing accuracy. That's the first problem that we have with these slug systems, that results in accuracy that's inconsistent. The other problem if you pick up our fired wads from the range is that you'll notice that the bases of our wads are all deformed, misangled, misaligned so that accuracy cannot be helped when that occurs with our wads. These problems do not affect shot charges because the shot wads are designed to deliver a shot charge but they don't work well for slugs in terms of the best accuracy. And that is, how do you match factory performance of 15 to 1600 feet per second with wads that are designed to shoot 1 and 1 8 ounce shot charges at 1250? And if we try and juice these wads with more powder, we wind up with blown patterns. Trap shooters know that. Well, so how can you possibly match that kind of performance with a slug with these wads designed for 1250? The answer is you don't. I'm sorry I don't have any fired wads to show you, but next time you see a shooter shooting reloaded slugs, you'll find the wads will be somewhere around halfway to the target, and when you pick them up, you'll see that they either have strip pedals or a deformed base or both. Interesting, factory slugs are not in shot cups. If you look in there, you'll see that the slug is bare. 
There is no shot cup that I'll be running between the slug and the barrel. This is by design. And you notice on the Brennecke slug on the left, there is a proprietary wad in there. And what you don't see is there is a post of that wad that goes up into the back end of the slug. So that the slug and the wad are mated together. Both are designed together to give us accuracy. And the same systems are true for the Federal and the Winchester slug. I'll show you why it's hard to match the accuracy and performance of factory slug loads. Took a Winchester 1 ounce factory slug load from about 25 years ago and cut it open with my Kershaw Blur blade back there. And what we found inside was 38.5 grains of a powder that probably burns between Herco and Blue Dot. Gives the load a performance of 1,550 feet per second, which is more performance than we can normally get with our own reloads. So we're behind the ball already with performance. Now as for accuracy, factory slugs deal with a totally different concept than what we have to deal with with our reloaded slugs. It's the foster slug and the filler wads with the over powder wad that was used 25 years ago, they probably use a proprietary plastic wad now that has some kind of extension that goes inside that foster slug. But the factory slug has a back ridge that measures 0.738 inches. And then that rifled section that goes up to the nose measures 0.723. Now just imagine this is going down your .700 shotgun barrel, either improved cylinder or cylinder bore, and it's actually riding the inside of the barrel with that back end. Then when it reaches the choke portion at .700, if there is a choke section at improved cylinder, it'll squeeze down and it continues to ride the 700 inch barrel because it's swedging down from 723 so that that gives you a very mated ride through the bore for best accuracy and the wads are the same diameter and in fact today's wads might be a plastic wad that has a little post going inside the slug for even better mating the idea here is a factory wad that was recovered from the range and you'll see that the base is not deformed. There are no pedals to strip. In fact, the slug is riding right down the barrel for maximum accuracy. And the little post section there fully mates the wad with the slug. You see how the slug will just separate from the wad, or if, even if it doesn't separate from the wad, it's a, it's a stabilized flight. And the wad is not deformed anywhere near the kind of deformation we get with our own slugs. So just imagine that slug being pink and it's sitting inside that Brennecke shell, inside that wad in there. This is what we're dealing with now. We cannot beat and it's very hard to even match the accuracy of factory slugs with our reloads because we're dealing with a totally different concept that was never designed to be mated together, never designed to be mated to the barrels that is go they're going through. So it's a little wonder that we're having a hard time matching factory accuracy and performance because they can load right up to 1500 plus feet per second or even more with magnums and still maintain accuracy and we can't do that. Now the factories don't sell these wads, they don't sell these slugs. And there are some isolated makers of slugs and wads that are available out there. But by the time we pay the cost, we're not getting that much of a break from factory. The one area that we can really beat factory loads is by casting our own slugs and reloading them for about one-tenth the cost. And because of that, we're very happy with our slug loads. Four inches at 50 yards, three and a half inches at 50 yards, that's not bad for one-tenth the cost. YouTubers out there, take care. Bye for now.